So like we left off in the last video, electrical energy, electricity, can be transformed into mechanical energy, the energy required to actually do stuff. So we went through these four steps, and the major part of this was actually magnetism. So we didn't talk too much about that yet. In this video, we're going to talk more about how magnetism and electricity are related. So before we discuss how magnetism and electricity are related, first we need to define exactly what a magnet is and a magnetic field. So a magnet is anything that produces a magnetic field, and there are actually only three types of metals that can become magnets, iron, cobalt, and nickel. A magnetic field is an invisible area of force that extends all around a magnet. So it's just the area around a magnet. That's what a magnetic field is. So this is a picture of a magnet and the red arrows are showing what a magnetic field is. So the magnetic field is just all that area surrounding the magnet. The magnetic domain is the way the atoms of a magnet are lined up. It's also known as the pole. So it's the magnetic domain. So in this picture, you can see the two different poles, the two domains. So atoms of a magnet are always lined up in the same direction. That's why there's a north and a south pole to every magnet. So the top part of the magnet would be north, the bottom part would be south. So all that means is all the atoms in the north pole are pointing up. All the atoms in the south pole are pointing down. So it's just the way the atoms are lining up within the magnet. And it's these poles that bring us to the next point of opposites attracting likes repelling, just like we talked about with electricity. Magnets also attract and repel. So in this example, the north would be attracted to the south because they're opposites. South and south would repel. North and north would repel. So opposite attract, opposites attract in magnets as well. So here I have two magnets. If they are opposites, they're going to attract. So that must mean I have a north and a south side. So as they come together, the magnetic field attracts each other. If I turn one around, now I probably have a north and a north. So instead of having a north and a south, now I have likes, and they'll never quite come together. Like, even if I try, I mean, I can technically put them away from each other, but if I let them go, they should spring away from each other. And they did. So while that, it hit my computer and messed it up. <laughs> so the magnets also, just like electricity, have opposites. Opposites attract likes repel. So let me get it from the floor. Oh, and look at this. While I was down there, I picked up a piece of metal. Cool. But nonetheless, so in the north side, that must mean all the atoms are lining up towards the north. In the south side, all the atoms are lining up headed south, headed down. So you might not have known this, but the Earth itself is a magnet. It exerts magnetic forces and is surrounded by a magnetic field. And the field is strongest near the north and the south poles. These are actually called the magnetic poles. So you've heard of the north and the south poles. This is where the magnetic field is strongest. So this is Earth's version of the magnetic field. So we looked at that picture with the red arrows. This is the same thing, except with the Earth and our magnetic field and compasses line themselves up with Earth's magnetic poles, north and south poles. So the compass is actually reading the magnetism of Earth. So we can finally answer this question now. How are electricity and magnetism related? So you need to know this term. An electromagnet is a magnet created by an electric current. So remember there were those three types of metals. If they are electrified, they become magnets. So when an electric current passes through a wire, a magnetic field is formed. In your lab, you created an electromagnet. So the nail became an electromagnet by passing current through the wire. So when I touch this nail to the paper clip in normal times, it doesn't stick because the nail is not magnetic yet. But I'm going to move this so you can see. When I add the current, the power source, which is the battery, 
and I add the power source, I've created an electromagnet now. So I've got the two ends onto the battery. I've got my power. Now, it's hard to do this with one hand, but I should be able to now pick up the nail. The I should now be able to pick up So I have my electric current because I have both ends hooked up to the positive and the negative of the battery. So now I've magnetized my nail. So now I should be able to pick it up. And voila. I did. So let me turn it if you can see. So now I have an electromagnet with my nail. I've picked it up because the current is passing through the wire which is magnetizing the metal. Now when I let one end go, I've broken the current and eventually my nail should fall off. So you can see that it's already getting messed up and eventually it falls off because the magnet is no longer working. The wire is no longer magnetized so the metal is no longer magnet. I should say that again. The metal is no longer magnetized because the current is no longer flowing. So we'll move on to our next point. So, an electric motor is a device which transforms electrical energy into mechanical energy. So this works with magnets. A basic electric motor has a power supply, which is the electric current usually, but sometimes it's other things, an outer permanent magnet, an electromagnet that can rotate. So this is what an electric motor looks like. So this is very similar to what we just made. The current is coming in through the with electricity. Then it magnetizes the surrounding permanent magnet. Then this inner magnet moves because the outer part has been magnetized. So it all goes back to the opposites attract, likes repel. As the outer, because the outer magnet is magnetized, now the inner electromagnet is going to either attract or repel. So it becomes kind of this constant cycle. The outer permanent magnet now move down. The permanent magnet is magnetized. The inner magnet is in constant states of likes repel, likes repel, likes repel. That constant state of like repelling, like repelling, opposites attracting, is causing rotation. So the current is the electricity. It magnetizes the electromagnet. Then the like poles of the electromagnet and the permanent magnet are repelling, which causes the electromagnet to rotate. And this rotation powers the motor, which is mechanical energy. So it's confusing, I know, but try to stay with me here. So the current is coming in through the wire. The current magnetizes the permanent magnet, just like the battery magnetized the nail. Then there's an electromagnet inside of that. Because likes are repelling, opposites are attracting, it's causing rotation. It's causing rotation within the electromagnet. As the electromagnet moves, it's powering the motor. So there's electromagnets in like your hair dryer or the washing machine, things like that, that need motors to run. And last but not least, we have generators. So a generator is the opposite of a motor. In a generator, it's transforming the mechanical energy into the electrical energy. So this is basically the same concept, but opposite. So this time you're starting with mechanical energy. So maybe it came from that motor, or maybe it's coming from a windmill, or maybe it's coming from a dam, hydroelectric power. Whatever it is, it's coming from a power source, using that power source to then create electricity. So it's the same principle of a permanent magnet with that cycle of lights repelling with the electromagnet. Dear Tim and Moby, how are electricity and magnetism related? From Inez. Just, just turn it off for now. Electricity and magnetism are really two sides of the same force, the electromagnetic force. Basically, that means that electricity can be converted to magnetism, and vice versa. The connection between the two forces was originally detected in 1820 by a Danish chemist named Hans Orsted. He observed that a wire with electricity running through it would make a compass needle move, but he had no idea what this finding meant. 
A decade later, a British scientist named Michael Faraday built on Orsted's work. Faraday correctly hypothesized that when an electric current runs through a wire, it creates a magnetic field around that wire. This discovery led Faraday to believe that the opposite might be true. A magnetic field could create or induce an electric current in a wire. To prove it, he moved a magnet through a coil of wire. Sure enough, an electric current was produced. He also found that the direction of the current changes depending on which way the magnet is moving. And the faster the magnet moves through the coil, the stronger the induced current. Meanwhile, the current running through the wire creates a magnetic field. The ability of magnets to create an electric current, and of electric currents to create magnetic fields, is called electromagnetic induction. The discovery of this relationship is considered one of the most important scientific developments in history. Electromagnetic induction is responsible for the widespread use of electricity in our world today. Generators, machines that convert movement into electricity, use moving magnets to create a current. Electric motors do the opposite, converting electricity into mechanical motion. And transformers use induction to convert the strength of an electric current. That's how the high voltage current from the power station is converted into the lower voltage current that your house uses. Last but not least, just about every electronic technology, from doorbells to airplanes, uses electromagnets, magnets created by electricity. It'd be pretty hard to imagine a world where we didn't use electromagnetic induction. Uh-oh. Dad's going to be really mad if that's still there when he gets home. So let's bring this back to where we started, way at the beginning, with electricity being transformed into mechanical energy. So I'll do these four steps with you. Let me move this so I can see myself again. Let me do these four steps with you using this as an example. So voltage causes electrons to move from one atom to another. So my source of voltage causing the electrons to move from one atom to another when I put the two ends together because opposites attract. Positive side of battery, negative side of battery, putting them together. So at this point, they're both together. Now we're at number two. The electrons are traveling through a conductor, a wire, and they're arriving at the piece of metal. This is the piece of metal, the nail. So the battery providing the voltage, which is causing the electrons to move through the wire. Now the electrons have arrived at the metal, which is the nail. Now the electrical current running through the wire is magnetizing the metal, my nail. So if this was a motor, it would be causing the motor to move, but this isn't a motor, but it's still magnetizing the metal nonetheless. So now I can use this magnetic energy to do stuff. So I'll do it one last time. Ooh, it's getting hot. It's burning me. Ooh, Ooh got to let go. Let it cool down a little bit. A little bit too much magnetization there. So I'll do it one last time. Voltage source being provided by the battery. Electrons flowing through the metal. Arriving at the, ma at the nail. Magnetizing the nail. And now I should be able to pick up the nail one last time. So one last time I get to pick it up because the nail is now magnetized because the electrical current is flowing through it. As I release the electrical current, the voltage source, eventually it should fall off. There we go. So that's those four steps in action. 